How is it now sitting flat on the floor, by the way, or is it a bit warped? Uh... <coughs> it's quite, it's quite good. This is pretty flat on the floor, at least that side, and and the, at least the two sides that were built on the floor are going to be pretty good, and the other ones, we'll see how they are. Um, the most challenging in the result was, I guess, the top where, like the far side there, the top where we had to get it into place. I mean, we got it to it within like a quarter inch of the the other sides, but there it might be off a little bit. Um, if you look at it just visual inspection, you don't see that it's like all wonky. It's It looks relatively good. But just to review, um, how do you do the universal frame? Just to review, uh, we went over this another time, but it's a good point to review now that we've got this other frame technique to add to our universal frame technique section. Uni. different ways to make frames as far as all that we have done. So the largest is the rebar trusses. We've done one of these rebar trusses and this is the kind of structure we're actually intending to build for the workshop. Uh, we built, now this is a six-sided frame out of half inch by four inch steel for a heavier machine. That we did with a six-sided frame method and that works quite well. How do you frame the corners? This is flat iron. Yeah, so you just weld the corners together. So it's flat, flat iron, flat iron. You just weld it. No, so what, aligning? I mean, you did you know, how you align it or cut the corners off? No, no. Oh, so the proper. So let's actually put this into this dock for how we w want to do this in the future for a large scale frame, and how you minimize the cuts and the angles. Just do straight cuts. And we do what what I call successive overlap. So let, let's take a look at um, what that looks like. But what's the pattern of the bars? So you cut, you can, and to make it simple conceptually as far as how you build it, cut one length only. You don't even need to worry about multiple lengths of bar. But how do you get the sides to be square? Well, you do this thing. Well, how how do you okay? So I got, let's, this is a question for you guys then. So tell me how am I going to get something that's got equal side lengths if I've got four equal side size members? It's not going to be like this because one side is going to be longer. So what do you do? Connect the corners, corner to corner. Could do that. Oh, yeah. Successive overlap. I kind of call it. That's why I call it. But then now you got a square. Mm, okay. Now you've got one part count for the f entire frame. It's a bar mm, that you cut to the same length. So this is the technique for large frames that that I would prefer, because as long as you have this relatively decent, and you can pay attention to this, you can measure the cross, you can do it on a welding table so it's flat. You're starting with a flat. It's simple. This is designed for fabrication here. Um, large frame. This is what I would prefer for large frames. In fact, this is very good for the small frames too. Like, so let's go back in the frame dock here. What we typically did was with this was actually get the CNC cut. So okay, you're avoiding all kinds of uh, inaccuracy. So this is once again a six-sided frame method, and that's what it looks like. We did a bunch of nested frames so that we have better use of material. So we did a bunch of frames like that. Um, the, if you're doing very large frames like this, like six by six, six by nine, you're not going to get that out of CNC cuts because they don't make material that big. They do. You, you have up to six by 12 sheet steel. Uh, it's not super stock, it's, it might be more expensive, but if you want anything larger, uh, you can't do the CNC cuts, you do want to do strips. You can get strips standard lengths of 20 feet. So you can get 20 feet, so you can make a 20 by 20 by 20 frame using this technique which we outlined here, uh, using this technique. 
So this applies up to 20 by 20 by 20. From very small, like even the very small, if you don't want to go to a, you don't have a CNC cutter, you just take, take strip, thin bar, and do this thing. And it's, it's quite precise. Uh, Cause you can pay attention. You can have a jig where you put in your four members and just line it up against the jig and you've got pretty much perfect pieces. You just gotta wait, make sure that when you tack weld, your welds aren't pulling. But if you're welding from the top, you're pulling it, you're not really pulling it, you're pulling it so it comes up off the table which if you weld the other side you can bang it down and make it straight again and tack on the other side so you can get pretty good quality control on this thing uh, so the other frames are the standard stuff bolted bolted which the disadvantage of that is that the bolts take a lot of space and they're not usable because it's not a flat surface anymore so you have to work around them but you do get easy structures like this like the first uh, well that's it wasn't the first that's V2 or even the iron worker shears, the shear cutters like this, which we do from half inch tubing. So this this is iron worker right here, we took that 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 could shear one by ten steel. Where was that? Hmm? Oh that's here. Yeah, that is here. Yeah, we did that in twenty thirteen after we built the first iron worker, which took us six months, so we built this one in two days. So to, just to prove that you can reduce prototyping cycles from months to days by using modular design. This is just a very basic modular design using the frame, a bolted frame method. So using stock tubing. Here, doing a frame for it could, could apply to a torch table or something like that once again from the... Were there any frailties to the, the cutting table? Oh, sorry, not cutting table. To this thing? Yeah. <laughs> No, that worked. We took it to destructive testing up to 1 by 12 steel and then it, the top bent. Okay. Mm -hmm. So we were testing it. Okay, how, how well can you do? So this is a thing you can replicate. The blade gap has to be pretty precise, yeah. but you can get that because you've got flat pieces of steel that are bonding this thing together. So you can actually get a pretty precise blade gap and make good cuts. So here's a, you know, like a $40,000 machine for like two thousand dollars in materials continuing on the frames and we got to add this new frame to this uh, universal frame section here and then we went to the 3d printed corners which work effectively with angle and that was the initial thought for this huge frame but since we didn't have the printers up in time we couldn't really print the corners and the corners would have to be more than uh, I'm not sure they would fit uh, for the 4x4 four four angle that they would fit on a, they wouldn't fit on a friend bed. So we well, couldn't really do this. Would be as, as effective, right? Just the hmm? block of wood. Instead of printing these angles of the block of wood or? Well, you got to catch the frame, catch the angle with a the angle slit. How are you going to do that? Are you going to mill that out or something? Okay, you need the slit, okay. Yeah, this, this thing has uh, of, the slits, which... Because of screws or? No, you've got a complete slit, like a... Oh, that's the L shape, or...? How far into the test slit? Yeah, go, go, go look at frame corners. Okay. Uh, yeah, they've got a slit, so that's a... It's just a great way to hold everything together, and then when everything goes into the, the slits, it's guaranteed to be a, a cube. Ah, okay. No if, as long as all your members are the same length, you're guaranteed. Mm -hmm. yeah. Say it again? And they're printed square. Uh, yeah, if they're printed That's square. The um, right. <laughs> so, so if you go to the genealogy, the first time we used this kind of stuff was... Uh, let's see I think maybe here 2007 so if you go to the CAD for example you can pull up these corners so that's how they look okay. oh, that's just, that's just quite and we actually have a free CAD designer that we can pr you can design these give it parameters so you can make this for whatever angle you like we, we do have that um, designer within FreeCAD so you can make custom versions of this. Um, but it's a cool thing and it would apply to this frame 
but not structurally because plastic is not going to hold this huge frame that weighs 500 pounds unless you print these very thick which you could it'll just take you a bunch of material so an effective way for these to work on a very large frame would be to use them as holders and then weld weld basically holders basically a jig just have kind of like an opening so that you can weld your, weld. your connector yeah weld like you know even like three pieces of rebar at every corner that would get you a pretty solid connect or just bars like three bars at every corner um, the holding is the tricky part because you're dealing with 500 pounds or so for that weight um, so it gets pretty intense these are the cutouts as on a CNC torch table um, so that those are the frame frame considerations so here largely using steel right so this is all pretty much steel and yeah I would go to this in the next version because I, I you know yesterday was pretty tiring this would be less tiring because you have to just put put them up like the part that's tiring is like working the the clamps and things that don't want to hold together and you're working against steel so you want to make it as simple as possible so with that uh, that's okay so now next step on this is to stand it up let's stand this up and let's mount the, the axes and as mentioned yesterday mount them at com comfortable working height not necessarily at the top because you're gonna have to use a, use a ladder or how, step stool how does the rod actually attach to the frame? so let's look at the attachment so that's that's the detail for today <coughs> um, it might be easier to do it while it's laying down not actually attach the uh, rod and how it, uh, how it connects. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's true. You could do it. So so there's... Uh, first, we do want to stand it up because... Uh, we should probably figure out where it should live. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like in the middle. I think in the middle. If you're more question about the frames, the six frames you're proposing, would yeah. the material cost be a bit better if, if you, you know, just because of this flat stuff or this, the angles yeah. are they a lot more expensive or it doesn't matter or? Uh, it's expensive, I would say, insofar it's your labor, but steel is, when you go to stock steel, whether it's quarter by four angle or quarter by four flat, they're comparable pound by pound. Okay. So it will be the added labor cost. So let's take a look at our frame which is somewhat like this. So what do we do first? We want to do attach the z-axis first because they're the harder ones or we can actually do all of them because they're actually on on opposite, all opposite all four sides. So it's actually a very convenient structure to work as a group on the four at the same time. In fact, six because you got two two z's on one side and there's enough space for people there's six feet on each side so you got actually comfortable working space for six teams if we had six teams um, so that's axis attachment to frame well so we've got your z axes first of all like what are we going to do for them where, where are they going to be uh, how, what kind of spacing? So where do we want to space them from the edge? We got so first of all, we've got six feet as the. So break it in, in thirds. Yeah, it's a good it idea. Sense, or does it? Yeah, thirds is a good idea. Although, should it be wider on the longer sides? Once well, we stand it up, only nine first, like the height. Yeah, so that. So, yeah, so we're. So, this is uh, how we'd work it. We, let's stand it up first. Because the other part of, about trying to work it on the ground, the axes would be fragile. You can damage them when you try to get this thing to stand up. So, <clears throat> that's your six foot mark. So, we're, what's the center of the. So every third, so every two feet. Yeah. Yep. So let's say two feet from the corner. Let's mark them, you know, like halfway to the axis or something like that. 
so do that two feet and yeah basically two feet or you can say two foot spacing um, so nose axis just drives it up and down the yeah bed is what actually goes side to side a bed goes up and down up only and down. Okay. the gantry goes x y okay, up and down and then there's movement on that axis Okay, and it. let's discuss why why that. So that's a side view, right? That's a front view, let's oh, say. View yeah. I think it's always good to add it because yeah, someone has no context. Get your computer out and add it. Yeah. Do you have a computer? Fair. That's a fair statement. So in collaborative design, the idea here, I'm not the only guy doing this. There's uh, people contributing to this as I'm doing it. Um, so that's the up these so these are collaborative docs meaning that anybody can edit this the share permissions here are anyone on the internet can find an edit <clears throat> so you can actually go into this doc and actually real time uh, do this including people remotely because this is on the internet so um, once again I mean all the design sessions we do all all that I do here is it's in live docs so people can Add pages and uh, make that. That's that's what we're supposed to do here in collaborative design. So that's the up direction. Now, where do we put? So we're gonna have. Uh, so these are how tall? They're nine. So we already cut the rods. We've got those. Um, we can add the nine foot dimension if we want. We cut that on the press so. the Abrasive cut off. And I saw some were torched. The torched ends we got to grind at. So uh, include also the cutoff ends too. They're sharp corners, so so grind that down so it's actually safe to handle, so you don't get cuts on it. Um, so this side here, that's going to be your nine feet. Now, where where are you gonna where exactly are we going to mount the axis, which is going to be six feet? Because we got six foot rods that are already cut to stock. The hollow tubes. So there's hollow and and solid so solid tubes vertically solid tubes for Z because that's only length we could get in that in the nine foot we cut it down from 20s you know, into the down axis, right? the the XY they're independent the only thing, that, what does the Z-axis attach to? The bed. Just the bed. The X and Y are independent. The X and Y attach to each other, but they're independent from the Z. So, well, so that's not, I'm not drawing this correctly here. The, the Y and X, they're out here. Well, anywhere, like, anywhere here. So that's going to be your looking say that that would be the two y's and the x connects in between them how high let's just say comfortable working height of six feet like we're like right there so because uh, we can actually move this as we work everything out it means that we can't print nine feet but all the mechanicals we can work out and and all of that so just just as we're building this and we can easily attach it but how do you attach it um, well, look at your, let's look at the, let's look at the 3D printed parts in the CAD. So we've got all this here. Um, what's attaching? And it's the motor piece, which is here. <clears throat> let's just download this. Oh no, let's do the. So the motor piece uh, it's on GitLab because it's pretty large for some reason. We could clean it up and probably make it smaller. But uh, so FreeCAD 16, I like to use legacy version, and then download the motor piece. It's on the desktop. So open it up. So we need to attach the motor and idler.
And none of the motor or idler or any of these parts would be inside of the heat chamber. No. Nope. So they would all melt. Yeah. This is all outside. The chamber is going to be the, the Z axis, the bed rods are going to penetrate the heat chamber. Everything is completely outside of it. Um, the closest to this in the open source is the Michigan Tech high temperature printer. Let's critique that. You can take a look at this, but these are good guys. The Joshua Pierce, uh, he's like a pretty hardcore open source hardware warrior. Uh, he actually ordered this printer for us for a build next year. <laughs> uh, so he's at a university, a university in Canada right now. The way they did their printer is they had a high temperature chamber, but they had the belt drive inside the high temperature chamber it was like below the bed but still that's not gonna get you too high up uh, you want to keep absolutely everything out which we're doing other people use I mentioned use bellows or other means some people try to cool cool their motors it's all complexities just keep it simple um, which is what we think we're doing here on the motor piece, I took the idler piece, added tabs, and put holes. <laughs> this is like rapid prototyping. I took the idler piece, I enlarged the hole for the motor, and I put four holes for the motor bolt pattern. And that's it. That's what you see on the table over there. So, um, so this is what we're printing, Ken. Uh, the bolt pattern of interest. And that's the bolt pattern of interest. All I did is, okay, it's in inches, but I did it in millimeters and that was 47 millimeters is the number. So I just put 47 millimeters between the bolt holes here. And, uh, oh, now you see that the holes are offset. Ah, okay, that's a, that's a bit error. Bit of an error, but still works. The, what we gotta pay attention to is that the, the pulley does not rub on the plastic, and I don't think it should, because um, I tested one, but the prints are coming up all, all on square, man. It's it's really bad. We should try to correct the axes. Um, and I'm not really seeing what's going on because I'm, when I'm looking at the printer itself, the X and Y, like the, the bed and the Z, are, they look relatively straight, but then the prints are not. Um, Ken, any insights? Um, that's a question yeah. for Ben to... Yeah. Um, but that's it. You got the rods going in. These are the one inch rods. Uh, I just butchered this thing. Like this was all I took was the old version. You see, that's all egged out. I just said, okay, let me put in this larger one inch hole because the holes here were too small and the spacing was different. So I just said, okay, let me put the, the spacing correct at 3.5. The rods still fit in there. Okay. Just go with this because we don't have time. Uh, so this holds your rods. It holds the motor. And it's good enough. So how do you attach it to the frame? Well, you got these these bolt holes on the outside. So I would suggest probably doing four bolt holes. Um, so this is carrying quite a bit of weight. Yeah, In fact, we should probably do a load. But the rods can be sitting on the ground. So those ones can, are sitting on the ground, but not all of them are sitting on the ground, though. Well, for the the yeah, X and Y, we got hollow rods. Hollow so no. it's much better it would be slider, like but, no. but here we are talking about quite a bit of weight um but the rods are sitting so all this is preventing is the rods like coming out yeah. so i think if we pay attention that we don't like drop the weight of the rods on this which we won't because the rods are going to fall through yeah. to the ground but then we can't move this can't slide this thing on the ground no. you're going to rip this thing right off yes okay so as long as we do that 
I think like four bolt holes on these corners or even like do the ones which are more meaty like in the middle like do these one two okay so I'm pointing pointing to these maybe do this one that one that one that one or even like this one and that one as a start but probably four these are quarter inch so I think four would be a good idea here um, which ones do you guys like? You want to do these four corners on the outside, or what I just said? Not Let's actually look at that. Yeah. yeah not much meat at the corner, perhaps. Right. There's th this one here is like towards the sun, like as far as yeah, what we've got for amount of plastic is like these these four in the middle look like the best ones to attach to, right now. Um, but yeah, that's all. So we have to transfer punch you know you can take this as a template transfer punch into the frame drill your holes in the frame you can use a regular drill uh you can use a mag drill too i mean a regular drill is it's you have to push it really really lean into it but you can because steel the, is soft i mean that's that's like oh well, you got to get your get your weight on it no, but, <laughs> it's not it's not like wood well, sometimes it's even hard to drill holes into wood if it's hard wood. So yeah, steel is 10x. Yeah, yeah. So anyway, um, you can do it by hand. I would just suggest that because that's going to be the quickest outside of just setting up the mag drill, which you can because you can mount the, the mag drill with a magnetic base to the frame. So you could do that. But um, you can go through some punishment and do this by hand uh which will be faster because we've got a bunch of drills we can do get a bunch of people going whereas we have only two mag drills uh so yeah could do both so this is on the ground so okay so let's take this piece and we're gonna mount this you're you're saying that we mount one axis at six feet so that we can interact with the head like this is for the x and y so let's focus on a z first well so we can be we can be right there as opposed to now you got to get up on a chair or get up on a table and you're uh, over there that's the nine foot height yeah. it's kind of inconvenient let's work why it out why don't we just because we're going to want stuff why don't we yeah. just, once we get it in place we just slide two steel tables in place or whatever and you can, yeah, we could do it, if you nice want to do it. Oh, yeah. It seems silly to, nice. to, to do something that is then going to sit like that until the next crew of people can... We can do it. Okay, so so we say... Not sure for the stars. No. Okay, cool. Um, yeah, I mean, if we have the energy for it, by all means. So let's do it. So let's do a... Slide, duplicate, slide. So Z, Z attachment. Yeah, you can do a step right on the frame, but then you got to kind of be like hanging out. It's yeah. literally ladders territory. I mean, small ladders just get, we got a bunch of those ladders. That yeah, you can get on the tables, yeah. Uh, but can we fit them around? It's six plus eight, 14 feet. Yeah, they'll bar barely fit. But oh, yeah. I think I yeah that you want to okay. Yeah, you could do you could do tables on two. Okay, sure. Oh, you want to mount them? Uh, I, I missed yeah, them. yeah. You want to no, that's right. I, why don't we just go for a comfy height? If I understood that. Um, well, that's why I was sure um, okay. Well, we've already had a rebellion at that point, so we're okay. moving forward to the top. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we Which I there, like. We Go for the top. Okay. The, table. I think the tables the are tables are easy way to do it actually. Yeah. Like walking yeah. around on a table like this, and they're huge tables. Yeah, I see. It. Yeah. But no, the that's. Printhead, I mean, if sure. Probably. But that means you print the table. If you start to print the table, is all the way up. Is that correct? Or no. Really? No. Okay. So I have to look at the. It's the just literally oh. so that. The, okay, it's fine. It's fine. Right. But oh, good. but here's the deal. Uh, this is good, but the print is going to be way at the top. You got to yeah, be sitting. You that's start. what I mean. You yeah, start on the top. Is it like that? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's but what I mean. and, and if you debug the print head or something, it's it's uh, it's not totally that's convenient. Okay. okay. Yeah. Uh, to I'm be discussed, I, I, I would So at the top or or what are we doing? Do I like the top because the, to move it over is another job. I think it's 
it's we're asking our where are we mounting where are we mounting hole. Otherwise, we should have built it at six feet and just like call it that. Yeah, well, leave something for the next crew. I mean, no. they also oh. have some fun. Okay, yeah, okay. Have okay I'm overruled. Okay, so the question is where do these, these uh, green guys go? But we're not there yet. We're, we're saying right now they're going to go where they should go, which is at the top. Uh, right below the top bar. Right below, yeah. So that you can. Uh, here, you can't. You got the bar in a way. So you need to have this. So what's going on there? Where is the X going to be? This is going to be X. That's the X axis in between the Y's. So this, let's call this the. So that's, that's where the X and Y are going to be below the top bar. So that you can act attach this has to be four, four inches plus below the top because there's the top angle right on top you can't smash through the angle the angles in the way so it has to really be below built a little gantry on the side that like gives you a little access up eventually right? put a power ladder on the side mm -hmm. so you can Okay, uh, so so we discuss that. Duplicate this slide to say Z attachment. Uh, so get rid of the. Okay, so now Z. Okay, and we're gonna go this with this thing. So we said we'll put the motors on the bottom. Yeah. Uh, easier to do wiring because you just need the, the wiring to the motors. So do that. Is there more strain on the motors? Is there uh, at the bottom? I mean, and uh, usually I guess you operate more on the top. Uh, you know, but I mean, you don't have this huge sprints with the Z. Just, just thinking out loud, that's all. Um, I'm not sure if there's any difference. The only difference is if you get a flood in here, you burn out your motors. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I guess you want to keep... Typically, the electronics are more accessible at the top, so you typically do it at the top, but here we're too big for that, probably. Uh, probably that's the reason. Um, Makes sense. Now let's go to the. Oh, we have a gantry. <laughs> Sorry. So now let's download this one, and and um. Let's open this one up. idler okay so this is going to be at the top and what are we, what is this thing here like can that was a what was this artifact the lip the raised oh, lip. Right. Um, this was the idea we were going to use the, um, the pulleys the, which were not symmetrical they were not symmetrical so you had to have a little ah. You don't need that now if you're going to use, uh, if you're going to 3D print the uh, pulleys. Yeah. Hmm, what's that mean for the 3D printed part? So that means that you go into part design and you do something like this. You would go, um, so let's do, try. What's a pulley? You could use the, in FreeCAD you can do something like this, probably. So a pulley in five seconds. What's a pulley? Something like this. Uh, can we do a solid of revolution on that? Which is this deal. So I'm going to select that. No, it didn't work. How do how do we do solids of revolution here? I was hoping this would get me a uh, 
Does anyone have experience with this? That's 116, right? Uh, yeah. Close. Let's see. Solid. So you got to select the sketch. Well, let's get rid of this one. So let's select this sketch. And then symmetric to plane, reversed, update view. Um, axis. Which axis do we want? No, we want the Y axis, which is horizontal sketch axis. No, I don't know. But that would be the profile of a, <laughs> of a pulley. We got to 3D print that. It's going to have a hole through the middle. Uh, so we've got this one. We'll, uh, it's probably easier just to half of the profile and then rotate it through whatever axis. Um, you know. Yeah. So we can just copy this. So that's that's like the front view of what your piece looks like here. So at the top you've got this. Now you have to put in the, the carriage piece too uh, before you uh, assemble this because you're not going to get it on. It's not a cl so this is where the clamshells would be convenient. You can just clam clamshell them on. Uh, right now you got to slip it in from the top. And um, I mean, someone can design a clamshell if that's actually better. I mean, you can basically cut the thing in half and, and use bolts to. You can actually print it in two pieces. You still need the bushings. Oh yeah, so yeah. the bushings still need to go on from the top. So. Yeah. The clamshell or? Yeah. Okay. Then you, then you're trying to hold more pieces in the air mm -hmm. while you're putting it together. And yeah. I don't know. I prefer to just have one piece you knock on. And yep. No, it's true. It is true. It's much more convenient when it come, come, that's what we learned in practice. It was just much more convenient to do that. <coughs> so then, uh, yeah. So you got these, that's the profile of the, the idler piece. And as you notice, they're all pretty tight in the vertical direction, just three inches. That's the minimum we could do, uh, or even like two and a half inches or so, because the bearings are only two, uh, 1.25. So this thing is only 2.5 tall, 2.5 inches. So that's basically what we've got for our axes. And then the belt, uh, we put the motors on. We So what's the procedure? Step one. Build motor piece. So what's it mean to build the motor piece? What are you doing to build the motor, the section below? What what goes in there? The motor. Attach the motor to the to this piece using four bolts. And drop the, the rods in. Uh, drop the rods and put the pulley on it before you attach it. Yeah, on the, on the motor. Build motor piece, which means we need that. Attach pulley. Attach motor with four bolts to plastic. What else? So what? The belt. We can wind wind it later, but it would be convenient to actually thread it through underneath since this thing. There's probably going to be a s space where we. Yeah. So let's talk about where we mount this. Where do we mount it? In terms of the frame, not all the way at the bottom. Why? First, you want the 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 steel to be protecting it. So mount it like an inch, just maybe in the middle of the bar. So you can still, like if you thread the belt through, let's make it like one inch from the bottom. So when we thread the belt through the bottom, you can push the, it's actually going to be hard. So if we're going to get that belt around there, either we pre-thread it. No, let's mount it as high as possible on the bar, which is, we can get one and a half inches. If it's four inches and this is two, 
What it, what length is that? It's like two inches. We can hang it as high as possible, which means about two inches above the bottom. So mount two inches from floor. Does that sound? Uh, mount Z motor the piece. Yeah. Yeah. We just say we flush. Have, like, at the top edge of the yeah. Yep. Bar. Yeah, Mount Z motor piece flush with upper edge of steel bottom frame piece. So that means this one goes. But where do the rods go? All the way to the floor. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So it's kind of like that. So now, what about, let's do the idler piece, build idler piece. So what's that mean? Let's look at the idler piece in detail. So, um... You have to actually press fit the bearing in there. Press fit, how do you do that? Carriage, idler. Oh wait, let's download the you latest. You printed it fairly large so it just slides in, right? Not for the bearing. Not the bearing. The rods, yes. So the bearings bearing. have to be tight, you can't have, have them fall out. Is it? No, so let's look at download this thing so it, it's Put on GitLab because we have a one meg limit. Press it in with the device. Yeah. So idler mod. So it's actually this this file here that we're using. Check this out. On one side, it's got a closed end. I put a cap on it. Why? Well, okay. Let me change the visibility to solid. Okay. I capped it on one end. So that you can press fit the bearing all the way in there. How do you press fit it? Stick a bolt through it and uh, press it down on a vise. Vise is the easiest. So you can do that. Now we need to 3D print the idler uh, pulleys. So we need to do that. So first thing would before we go to, before we do this, put a few of these. That should be a quick print. So, uh, but we got to design that thing. Um, we also need um, your bolt clamps. Bolt. So what? Belt clamps. And oh yes, we need belt clamps and a and a belt peg, uh, but we're not there yet. That's the carriage. So here, we're gonna press fit the one bearing on the underside, but at that point you have to take a cut a little piece of eight millimeter shaft. Yeah? Yep. So step one, build either piece, press fit one. That's a roller skate bearing. Um, a skateboard bearing. It's a press fit one. That's a standard skateboard. Yeah. Skateboard all over. On the close, on the capped side, uh, cut a s cut a small shaft. That's the eight millimeter rod. How long then? How long is that? Here, we can take a look at the dimensions, and that length would be from there to there. One point eight inches. So that bearing in the bottom doesn't press all the way. So that's okay. So just cut it two inches. Um, 
yeah don't like jam it all the way it might get jammed up but then we can punch it back out uh, so the bearing goes all the way in the the shaft but before you put the shaft in put the pulley on it so cut the cut the shaft and that pulley doesn't even need to be bound up on the on the shaft at all does it like, you want like to, if it to goes through it doesn't even need a set screw really no press fit is perfectly fine yeah. But it can be sliding back and forth because your belt will rub. So mount the pulley, mount idler pulley. That's a 3D printed piece that someone will design right now as we speak. Mount idler pulley, insert into first bearing and insert the second bearing. Insert shaft assembly into first bearing, add second bearing, press fit it. How do you press fit it over the shaft? It would help to have this length, if you have 1.8 millimeters, uh, 1.8 inches, a press fit would get you all the way, the bearing would get the bearing all the way in. Otherwise, you have to have like a tube that's pressing on it. So maybe let's cut that shaft to 1.8 inches. And then you just throw the whole thing into place. Yeah. 1.8 inch. Press fit. Press fit it on a vise. And it's very convenient. We did that for the, the spool holder. It's really nice. Nice technique for, the, for press fitting very easily. So now assemble the assemble carriage piece. Yeah, I'm just thinking about the bottom there. Like, is one and a half inches going to be enough room to get slip that belt in, or do we have to pre-thread the belt? I think it will be okay one and a half inches of space to take pliers and just lead the belt back up yeah I think we'll do it otherwise I mean we have to take a pry bar and uh, like lift a little bit of a frame off the bottom now nah, we'll, we'll be okay I think there's enough space so carriage piece <coughs> what do you do here step one how do you assemble it the, um, the bearings, the bearings, whatever mm -hmm. the bushings. Yep. I mean, if they're good and tight, this one really need a. Um, if they were press fit, but we're not press fitting them, and they're just thin wall enough they're only like eighth inch wall that if the press fit is too tight you might deform them so then also the weight you're talking about it's pretty heavy bed so you want to so definitely want to set them like yeah okay. how do you do that yeah fix the Yeah, I actually found, so actually the, I got a little treat, I did that last night, so use a small flanged bearing. So what I mean by that, so if you see here, um, use a small flanged bearing on this side and it just catches it. But what about on that side? It's a little bit longer. We use a washer. Use a little washer. Yeah. We've got those. So bearing on one side, mm. washer. How, and what do you do to screw in? Um, use one of our great big Frankenstein bolts. Yep. Uh, use the 30. Use a small flange bearing on outer side. With M6 by 30 
volt. Why not 18? Grab it better. More, more depth. And then use a washer on interior side. Uh, you can use an M, M6 by 18 there. Why? Because look how much meat you've got. You only have this much meat to go into. Because it goes out there. That's only 0.4 inch. You don't have a lot of meat there, so most of the holding is going to come from this hole here. Uh, so actually, when you screw it down, don't strip it. Don't strip that bolt. Strip that hole. Uh, for future reference, we 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 actually would want to build that up. Maybe uh, put a little. Uh, in fact, we do that right now. Yeah, extend that. So this is how FreeCAD is quite convenient in this. Like you can make transparency here. So the the feature on a feature, the pad padding out surfaces is very useful. So we'll take both the bottom. So that surface, I'm going to pad it out. So I'm just going to draw. I'm just going to draw a simple square here. And another one down here. So see what I did? I did that, then pat it. But you, now you then you gotta do a extend the, the hole. Through. We can possibly just send it all the way through. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then just poke a hole through it. Same size. There you go. Fixed. So that will be the future print. So can so save this as carriage mod v2. So this is kind of like real time updating here, and this this thing lives on a wiki. So carriage. Uh, carriage here, upload new version. So let's upload a new version of this file. Carriage mod v2. And the workflow for upload warning, it's a large style, ignore that. Okay, so we've got this one, this new updated one. How do you actually get this for printing? So the workflow for our printing is you got to select the whole thing and then go to export and export as STL and you're ready to print. So you go to well, file. So you have to go through Cura, of course. Yeah. Uh, you gotta go through Cura, but but here we're gonna export the STL. So you just select STL. So carriage mod v2. So there we go. And now you can open this up in Cura. Um so actually it's useful like I would I would put this right on the on a wiki here. So the STL is a useful file. Save somebody the step of having to re-export, open up FreeCAD and re-export. So I would go carriage one as this one, just upload a new file over this one. So since we just did that, we can choose this carriage mod v2 STL and do that, upload it. There we go. So now this new upload is here, and we can put that into Cura. That's what produces the code. Yeah. So there we go. This is how it appears in Cura. Oh, what happened there? So uh, the bed the, it grayed out, which means we're pushing the limits of the bed. Layer height was 0 0.6. Um, so you gotta, I think my bed size is a little off. 
Well, let's increase that a little bit. Yeah, my bed size was a little too small. Um, the question is how how wide across is this? It has to be like 5.5. Is that so? Uh, if we just check, one, one six is yeah two, six. So it's really pushing it. But yeah, so we're pushing it. But <laughs> what's the what's the distance here? We've got we should have like 145. Yeah, 5.5. That's good. We, the the thing is why that graded out for me is because it likes to. Oh, what happened there? It grayed out. I get okay. It's just fitting. It likes to leave a little space outside. So if you have a six inch bed, it won't let you, like it didn't even let me do 5.5. Yeah. Yeah, so that's still, if it gets grayed out, go to machine settings. But yeah, we're just doing this for, uh, yeah. And then you save G code, it just tells you carriage mod V2 G code, desktop. Well, what are some of the nice parameters you gotta set? So we, we look at, examine this just for production engineering sake. So if you go, typically we go 1.2 with 0.4 layer height, which gets you really nice prints, very tight adhesion. Three hours, 15 minutes, it says in the time window there. What happens when you go to 0 0.6? But look at the, look at the weight. It's three hours, 110 grams. What happens when you go to 0 0.6? Two hours, 12 minutes. 110 grams, same weight, so shorter time. So that means it's extruding more mm -hmm. in order to make up for the larger layer height. So but it works really well. Pushing it out faster. Yeah. Uh, but two hours, man, that's, that's really good. Like I, I was thinking this would be four hours or and that's six. that's going to be quality enough and bonded enough. Yeah, take a look at what we've got. If we if we find not, if the parts start breaking, we do like 0.4. Um, what does that mean? This is like 0.6. You know, they're they're halfway bound through 0.4. Is that they're, they're even tighter bound through one layer to the next? The way it works, you're melting into the former layer. That's what happens. That's how it works. It's not about the layer below staying staying uh, molten. So it's, it's about the heat from the top bonding into the bottom so the more over the smaller heights the more you're pressing more mass you're pressing into the former layer getting a better melt into the former layer so if you find this is inadequate we might reduce the layer height and or i mean this is still 20 percent it's 20 percent you can go solid so at 0.6 layer height whatever you're going to do for solid i mean this changes drastically so if we printed this 100% solid, oh, it's only twice as much in four hours. Mm -hmm. So that'll be our next step if we find these parts are failing. But as I understand, is that correct? Solid does not necessarily mean it's a lot, lot stronger than if you have a honeycomb or something, or is that? No, it's just the amount of mass you have. The better it's like, it's the same question as, is a hollow rod as strong as a solid rod? It's not, but if you look at it's somewhat counterintuitive because a solid rod will sag, whereas a straight rod will not. So is the straight rod stronger? What's the answer to that? Well, it depends on the force or? Um, no force, no. just the weight. Okay. Well, what's the answer? Stronger? So okay, this is a good question. This is, you got to think about this. If, okay, let's ask this question. This is a good design question that you have to think about when you design a machine. If a, if a solid rod actually starts to sag, say over 10 feet, under its own weight, right? Then you take the same one inch rod that's hollow, it's got one eighth inch wall, you span the, the 10 feet and it doesn't sag under its own weight. Is, the, more strength, right? is the hollow one actually stronger? <laughs> this is a great question, man. Yeah, it's lighter. That's all. But you might think it's stronger because it's not bending down. But it has more potential tensile strength too, no? No, it doesn't. Not at all. 
doesn't get not at all because it's it's the amount of the strength is determined it's like okay think about I this that it's the mass that's sagging it but yeah but having both the, the outer surface and the inner surface does that not give um no different properties no it doesn't think about it this way so think about it as that solid rod was made of the hollow rod another smaller hollow rod inside another smaller that gives you the answer to that doesn't it to the what the question was kind of it but that the internal structuring of the material isn't a laminar cylinder right that that just seems to be there's some principle of strength in but tensile strength is only determined by the material, right? It's, the here's the answer. The answer is per weight. Right. Yeah. Uh, it'll be the same. Yeah. But you got more mm -hmm. weight. In, it's actually, yeah, it's, it's not. It's, it's, if it's got a hollow core that's got zero strength, it, if you had more meat inside, you'd have more particles, matter, holding more matter it's plain stronger there's yeah. no question about yeah. it it's just kind of confusing because you see the physical reality and it it looks kind of, kind of counterintuitive like when i first saw that the straight rod does not sag my first impression was is this thing stronger because they both i mean they're both like hollow rod they, they both weigh something but um you might start thinking that uh the the solid rod is actually like weaker because um of something but no the the only reason is gravity it's it's metal bends it's just gravity that's all so it's not not anything to do with its strength it's much stronger actually so now the the truth would come out once you start hanging well no no it bends a lot so that it's kind of counterintuitive because you might hang a solid object from the the, the filled rod and it still would fail because it just bends because it's the gravity adding and the other object adding but if you added perhaps like a very small small weight to it uh, or or let's look at it differently let's shorten it up to three feet where both of them are completely solid three feet uh, if you add a heavy weight to it the solid one would not deflect anywhere near as the hollow one that would be the reality well, there. When you, when you say that, just to be clear, like uh, on the design side, does the the type of strength you're looking for matter, right? Because there's like different qualities. If it was, if yeah, the hollow rod was filled with like a hip polymer or something that's bulletproof, you know, like the steel vests are heavy and bullets still go through, but there's other polymers that will stop, you know, like has yeah. more impact resistance. Yeah, it t completely depends on the materials, and composites are a good way, like if you put other things mixed w with it, you might have super light structure and still that stiffness because you filled up that inner void uh, with something that's more stiff. So there's stiffness, there's like tensile, compressive strength, there's torsion strength. Those yeah. properties may be different for the same material. They're typically, like in steel, it's it's about an anisotropic like is the property the same throughout in one direction versus another like wood certainly does not have the same properties in different direction steel it's more more isotropic it's got more similar properties in all the different directions across the but, 10 foot span with the two yeah. will the the hollow one break first or because of the weight of its own weight, will the solid one and, and the deflection from that, will it break first? It depends on the weight regime. If you've got like, I would say like in a small weight case, uh, it depends, depends how much weight. If you got a ton of weight, like a lot of weight, you might find that the, the solid one might actually do better uh, because yeah, beyond it's hanging by its own weight. Yeah, I don't know. It would depend. Uh, yeah. You can actually do it in FreeCAD. See what FreeCAD says. It's got finite element analysis. Because then there would be like That's a, the kind of, a functional you actually got to calculate it. characteristic, right? Even if it's stronger, but if it breaks first, then it's not oh. functional. You could have fracture strength, like a piece of glass. 
you cannot scratch a piece of glass like say diamond but it'll break easily right so fracture strength is another thing it's brittle so something brittle would not hold any weight so you want that tense that the fact that steel bends you want tractors made of steel not aluminum Steel, steel will steel, bend. Stainless steel can be used in a sense? Uh, it might more be more brittle, stiff. Or, but, but more brittle, right? Might be more brittle. I'm not up on a stainless steels. Um, but stainless is actually a very good idea. It's adding chromium to steel, which makes it not rust, which is a big issue. Like, all the stuff here rusts. We just migrated to stainless steel rods for the uh, the small 3D printers, and we should probably do that for the, the big rods. So they're going to rust unless you oil them and stuff like that. If, you, if they're in use, they'll, they'll last forever, but if they sit around, they'll rust. But then you've got the expense of stainless, but if you can alloy your, your own chromium, which lives in South Africa and other places, and get a container of that and mix that in your, like the steel we have, say we got the induction furnace, we're on some chromium, and you got stainless steel. So, <laughs> it's just a certain amount of chromium content that makes it not rust, which is a very unique, from our perspective, it's quite valuable, because we talk about lifetime design, like, like that's not, we don't have to recycle it, you can still keep using it for much longer, it's just not degrading, yeah. Can you lab grow steel, like from open source steel, like, I know you can like lab grow diamonds, like anything has a crystalline structure, like, is it possible to lab grow metals? Lab grow? Yeah. Definitely, like... <laughs> I, I know it sounds crazy, but I mean, I'm, I'm asking... Do they grow the diamonds or do they compress? I don't know. In the lab? There, I mean, there's sea crystals, you know, that, that will end up growing, and to your point, I mean, there are things that you can do to create that reaction. Um, yeah, but where, what, what from? From what? Um, Diamond is a high pressure, high temperature. You can do electro winning, which water has all kinds of minerals dissolved in it, and it'll crystallize when you put electrodes through water. Yeah, that's like sea cement. Yeah. It's yeah, I don't know. To do, actually. It's very and using other frequencies, because you could potentially draw out other minerals, right? Or just some, something like. Yeah, I, I don't know about so much of this, but. <coughs> you know, you pull out the other things. Do they succeed? No, no. <laughs> yeah. They didn't tell anybody. Yeah, that's how they funded their moon race. <laughs> yeah, everybody knows that. Yeah. <laughs> Something about hemp crystals and, I don't know, getting stoned if your house ever catches on fire would be in order here. Literally <laughs> <laughs> going up the smoke, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Everybody, come on! Gather round! All right. Um, okay, so back to the large studio print. So we've got the, let's see, uh, the carriage piece. Use the washer on the interior side. Where do we get sidetracked? Um, yeah, we were looking at... Yeah, so pulley, there's... So carriage, I think we've got... Oh, yeah, we just did that. We uploaded it and in Cura you see the new version with the modification that's if you go hit carriage mod v2g code you would do it according to the parameters I just wanted to show a couple more parameters what is important here 100% okay well you can set various parameters. The ones you typically want to work with are like layer height, shell thickness, it means how much, how many layers are on the very outside. Actually 2.4 makes a very solid shell. 1.2 works pretty well too. But if you want a super solid part with less infill, do a thicker shell, which makes it very strong. Like 1.2 millimeter, that in itself is very strong. These prints will be much stronger than ones printed with 0.4 millimeter nozzles. There's just more more overlap like if you do yeah 
more well more heat that you're depositing into the former layer for gluing the next layer into the former that's the advantage of large nozzles so so with a hundred percent well twenty percent only takes because there's already so much mass in it and there's enough features twenty percent was already like fifty percent filled in um, uh, support type with the PEI print bed surface and heated bed don't use them typically it just sticks well uh, temperature printing is 220 and bed temperature is 60 print speed of 25 um, yeah I don't know why this do any tool pathing for this you're just setting the settings but you don't have to tell like with a uh, router table like no this this does this all automatically for you toolpath is what this does it says it says save G code and it just figures all, everything out yeah. for you assuming that it's zeroed yeah. now shell thickness is 1.1 I take it to 1.2 look at that that was enough to make it not fit on a bed mm -hmm. um, this can you can control with a 1.2 nozzle you can print thinner layers than 1.2 it means it's just under extruding slightly so I actually had it at 1.1 here um, 1.2 it starts not to fit again in the bed in which case I would go to just make that larger yeah so settings um, so we can 3D print, this. if we're printing new ones, can download the new part. Uh, fitting bearings, uh, now belts, belts are the next thing. We need belt pegs and belt pinches, belt clamps. What do those things look like? Do, do we already have ones that would work? Like, I feel like we have two sizes currently. That big size, I'm not sure you're going to get 15 millimeters in that okay. depth there. So we'd have to... Uh, modify, but here we've got one. We got a longer one. Can you just do two metal. Um, um, yeah, you could put a little like bar and. Screws and yeah, you could do that um, for the belt. You could actually do that on both sides, but the issue is going to be tensioning it because we've. Yeah, no, that's. Yeah, you could do that. You can do a little melt metal clamp. Uh, plastic might be easier. Or maybe not. Maybe we got to go to the, because now we're pushing the limits of how much you got to clamp. So th that clamp we would want to print probably at like a hundred percent, because you got to hold that belt. Probably p print the clamp, the peg. I think that'll be fine for twenty percent. Belt clamp, hundred percent. For the belt peg. Yeah, it's a simple design, just a little cylinder. Um, okay, so how do we divvy up? We can each take an axe, take the nine foot rods, and start assembling to this according to this procedure. Can we briefly go back to the uh, the, what it, the carriage and the two bushings? Uh, do we have to worry about like you know in the small printer or something like that, like this insulation tape that we have to get things kind of straightened out, or is, is there no concern? Uh, this thing. Uh, yeah, and then we have the two bushings, right, that go in. See how it goes. Okay. It has to slide easily. Yeah. Okay. And it, wobble. it can't yeah. wobble. Mm -hmm. Well, but for this, since this is just holding the weight, if it wobbles, not, it's probably going to get stabilized by the fact that it's, it's got four altogether. It could be that one way to think about it is if you've got two of these up per side, say the left one here is tight against the rod and the right one is com is rather loose. Well, if you have the next one over that's got the outer one tight and the inner loose, the outer one's probably constrained enough that you don't have any wobble. Yeah. You know, it's, there's different ways you can look at it. But ideally, you, you've got good fit on each that's the side. Case, you probably want to have the, both of the tighter ones in or both out, not like one out, one in for the two different carriages. Yeah. 
A little space is desirable. Why? These do have to be parallel from the top to bottom. Why? We don't have any adjustment that way. We are, com we are adjusting, what I mentioned yesterday, we are adjusting for the non-parallel on the, on the Y. Yeah. There's, that's the rod goes, for, right? hmm? That's what heat goes for. It's tight at the bottom, we're just heat. Right, oh, yeah. but what does that mean for the attachment of the axis? Measure from, don't measure from the edge, measure from axis to axis at top and bottom. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Because the frame may be off. Mm -hmm. The frame is off. You still got parallel by measuring the two Z axes at two feet. So let's make that note here. Yeah, I guess even if the frame That's, is You're saying off. how you attach them to the actual frame have to be dead parallel. Yes, because, because we have no adjustment there. Still, I was still is. thinking on the two rods per carriage. Those also have to be parallel. That's well, that that's that we've got. We've got the three printed pieces with 3.5 inch spacing. That should be good, possibly. Yeah. But that's that's close enough. But here we're talking about up to like an inch, possibly or half inch. There you're talking about like an eighth yeah. or so. So, but here, pay attention to this distance. Um, so let's let's emphasize these two distances here. they need to be the same for this not to bind up going up or the rods will just bend out quite a bit now if you have the bed attached at some point well that determines it's going definitely going to be good there but what happens when you go up and down is it still going to be parallel so you gotta make sure that's all good so here that make sure these distances are equal And then it will have a working Z axis there. Okay, that's that's it. Uh, for, I'm not too concerned about the individual carriages being good because I mean it's such a long length and you've got enough flex in these rods that you'd have issues only very close to the top and bottom, just like on other printers. Now because it's nine feet, that proportion of travel is much smaller. It's so it'll be pretty much good everywhere. Um, Unless you print in something that's eight feet, you're never reaching to the bottom, so you don't ever test the parallel at the bottom. In the middle, it, ha it will have enough flex to accept whatever you got. So actually, the best idea here would be to mount the bed up, up at, on the top. That will be the best idea, because then you know you're loose there, and in the middle, you got enough play in the, in the rods to make up for any inaccuracy like half inch would be easily acceptable. It won't be acceptable at the very bottom where the rods are now tightly constrained. So mount, so another point, important point to mount the bed at the top, but we're not at the bed yet, but what we might want to do is, uh, uh, that's, no, that's for later. That, that's when we actually add the bed. So when we do the bed, We'll mount the bed at the top. Say what? Uh, slide thirty. Uh, we're not getting a slide. What? Slide number thirty. Okay. Oh yeah. Uh, you want it? Yeah. I mean, where's that from? Yeah, probably needs to be. It needs to be one half inch. You want to match. You want to match the other one, uh, unless the belts are going to be thin at the top. We got one half inch at the top, so that you want to have a diameter of one half inch at the bottom. This doesn't look like that. You can stretch it up and shrink it. There's no, it's not constrained with uh, dim, uh, dimensions. Mm -hmm. You can edit. Yeah. You can edit. Sure. 
That's fine. So what are the dimensions? You need well, you need 15, so make it like 17. It's 18, it's actually 18 across. Okay. What's 18? 18 millimeters. The inner diameter or? No, not the diameter, the, the length across, the, the width of the, uh, the inner... Inner uh, hole? Uh, no, no, this... This distance here, in between where the yeah. belt sits. Where the, oh, belt where the belt sits. Belt, the belt it's 18? Yeah. 18 is good. Belt height. So yeah. 18 is good. 1.5 millimeters to the side of the belt. And the diameter, you want to make it half inch to equal, to be equal at that at the top. Okay. Uh, half now, half inch has to fit around 3 eighths. That's very little, so make it maybe like 5 eighths. Can you talk millimeters? <laughs> yeah, instead of like 12.5 12 millimeters, do like 20. Because you don't have around 8 millimeters. That's a very thin wall on that pulley. It might work, but do it like 20 millimeters diameter. Okay. Yeah. All right. uh, which means that the belt will be slightly wider at the bottom and I don't think it matters the the thing that would matter is what happens with the carriage does the carriage in this picture here what's the distance between there and there see this distance between here and there that needs to be smaller or larger than the diameter of the pulley so what is that distance it's got to be under 20 uh, over 20 Okay, it's 0.95 inches, which is like 21. Yeah, so can you go half from here to here? Um, are we at a point that we could continue working these details out down in the shop while, while also? Mm -hmm. Maybe? Yeah. Yeah, let's do it. Yeah. Cool. Let's go down there. Let's get it on shoulder. Ben is getting empty. Oh, I got empty. Yeah. <laughs> Let's shoot up some metal. Let's some grinding. Let's push some targets. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Can kind I of make it like 18, 18 millimeters or so? Yeah, it'll be good. All right, let's go down there. <laughs>